Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back for another little another little cult meeting on my channel. Um, if you're new here, I don't see how you could be new here really though for a stream, but um, if you're new here, that's just our fun little bit. We're having a little cult meeting today to talk about horror movie news. Cause there's a lot going on. Like I feel like a day has not gone by where something hasn't been announced and um we got some exciting stuff to go over today like movies that i'm really really looking forward to um so we're gonna you know like react to the news together if you've never been on one of these streams before basically like i've i've pulled up a ton of articles um about like you know of all the headlines you saw in the thumbnail and then we kind of go through it together and we, we we dive in beyond the headline we figure out what's going on you know um let's see who's here Hello. Um, I sure hope so. I'm glad that you're here. Here for the cult meeting. Nice. As I was, as I was saying. Yep. Hey, Gory Tiger. Time for an ice cold one. Yeah. Five o'clock somewhere. 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 I'm a little like I would. You know, like I'm a little. I feel like I'm a little off today. Last yesterday was um Good Friday. My boyfriend's family is like you know they're like they're like light catholic i would say they're not even like medium catholic like basically we were like partying yesterday for good friday um so you know indulge but then i like slept for nine hours and i've had a lot of coffee so um we're we're live today we're live hello hi jonathan hi haven't made a live in a while oh well glad to have you it's good it's going well um can i be in sequel i don't know can you be in sequel hi so yeah it is it's nice and, and you know cloudy today it was raining earlier hey Paige, you made it just got back from a family birthday lunch nice um yeah pumped up on cob fefe i'm bringing that joke back we're bringing that back around um that was like one of the funniest typos i'd ever seen in my life when did that happen that was like eight years ago now or something um or was that only four years ago it was one of the election years. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm bringing it back. It's funny. Cub Fefe? Like, how do you even fuck it up that badly? Hello. 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 Um, Evanescence. Is that a movie or is that a, like, another creator? Um, oh, nice. Oh, hey, Anthony. I'm oh, glad you made it. Shut up while Kyle's being a little goblin. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, Oh, you want to be one of my movies? Well, you know, you gotta you gotta find those casting calls. Oh, uh, but also for uh for liked, it was a little bit of nepotism. I already knew Megan; she was already my star. Oh, hey, from Germany. Ah, guten Tag. Oh, uh, or a guten Abend. It's probably it's evening there, right? Good to be here. Glad to have you. Um, Friday was good. Have you bought a good crayon? Oh, the Dodgers won. Hell yeah. Um, not here for a cult meeting. Well, I don't know what to tell you, partner. <laughs> um, 15 cameras. Isn't that, is that a sequel? Oh, it's a rock band from the 2000s. Oh, no, I'm not familiar. Um, did I take a handshaking with a with Pooh from the Q&A screening. Um, no, I got a, I got a picture with one of the actresses. Um, that's a, it's a whole story. Like I'll explain that in my March recap. That's going to come out next Friday. Um, but yeah, they, they had like double booked me for moderating. Um, so I didn't get a, I didn't end up getting to do that, but I asked them some questions and I met them and got a poster. I ended up getting, uh, I got lunch with the composer the next day. We had a really good meeting. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll talk about that in, in my recap. Um, oh yeah, L like the stream, of course. Oh, sister. Hi, Tiago. Uh, um, I know you haven't been here in a while. I'm, I'm glad you're here too. Uh, I speak German. Uh, ich sprech, ich, ich sprech, sprech ein bisschen, ein bisschen. Deutsch. <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. I haven't, I haven't practiced in a long time though. That was rough. That pronunciation was rough, but yeah, a little bit. Um, anyway. Okay. Let me go over kind of like the lineup that we have for today. So 
we have got a solid uh, like nine topics to go over. Um, so first of all, um, I kind of put them in order of like my excitement and like how big the news is because I just figured that a lot of you guys are going to be wanting to talk about this stuff too. So first of all, um, Don Mancini has confirmed a new Chucky movie. I don't know if there are any details, but that's what we're going to find out today. Ready or Not 2 is happening with Sabara Weaving. Excuse me, sorry. Um, so we're going to get into the, all the details of that. I don't know if like the radio silence team, if that, you know, it's going to be the same directors and all that. So we'll find that out. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 3 is confirmed. Um, so we'll get more details about that. Uh, <clears throat> then we've got, oh, the monkey, the monkey adaptation. I believe that it's now wrapped filming and we're just now finding out the cast. It's the one that's being directed by Osgood Perkins um, or Oz Perkins. Does he go by is Olga his full name? Did I just like pull that out of nowhere? Anyways, um, the new Fear Street movie has been cast. We know some more plot details about that. Uh, Shawnee Smith is starring in a new slasher. Um, David Schwimmer has been cast in the second season of Goosebumps. They're going in like a whole new direction with the second season. Um, there's uh, there's this movie that I only heard of recently because I'm actually I'm actually going to the premiere tonight um, of Monster Mash, and so we'll talk about that. And then finally, um, Kristen Stewart was interviewed about wanting to make a horror movie. So I was hoping to, you know, find out a little bit about that, like see if she's in talks for anything. So that is what we have to go over today. Um, I'll catch up with the chat and see if uh, anybody objects to the order of things. But yeah, um, for Blood and 23 director. No, they're, they're really set on like their 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 little team and like who's directing and writing and everything um that's uh Re what's his name reese frake waterfield or something is one of the writer directors um of the of the pooniverse oh gosh the pooniverse i guess we have to talk about that too um anyway oh uh wait have i been to halloween Horror? yeah i vlogged it last year i have um yeah, Theo James is well, yeah, we got we'll talk about that cast in a minute. Um, hello, thank you. April 1st is next week. Uh, you've talked the yeah, I've talked about the original. Um, I no, I don't I don't think so. I guess I could do a watch along, um, but I just rewatched the first movie and I watched the remake for the first time, and it was so bad. Like, I fully intended on releasing an original verse remake on April 1st, but the remake was just so bad. I was like, I don't even want to talk about this. <laughs> like, I just don't even, I was like, I can't like there. And also any of the, um, like behind the scenes and stuff, it like doesn't exist. Like I couldn't find, I found one reunion Q and a panel for the original movie and like one behind the scenes video for the original, I couldn't find anything else. So I was like, I can't even like really do a deep dive into this at all. So I just didn't feel like it was worth it. Um, so, you know, anyway, yeah, I know so many sequels it's, it's never ending, unfortunately. Uh, the, uh, the crow, maybe, maybe it depends when the new one comes out. So we'll, we'll see. You're up for a watch along. I wish I hadn't like literally just, just, just done that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see. This is my last week in the country. Uh, so I don't know. I'm going to be having to do like, uh, I'm going to, I'm working on my, my Frankenstein deep dive right now. That's like about a third of the way scripted so far. And so I just don't know if I'm going to have time for a watch along next week, but we will see. We'll see. Oh, I know. Margot Robbie's producing The Sims. I, I mean, I'm kind of excited. Like, I can't even pretend like I'm not, um, because I love The Sims and there's just like, there's a lot I think that could be done there actually. But, um, anyways, let's talk about, let's talk about the new Chucky movie. Let's see what's going on with that. Um, got to share my screen and we can read it together. Okay. So... A new film is in its early stages, so um, this would be in addition to the Chucky TV show, uh, but I, so that leads me to believe that, like, season three is probably going to be the last one of Chucky. Um, so he appeared on the Scream Dreams podcast, co-hosted by Barbara Crampton. I didn't know she had a podcast. What? Okay, um, it didn't say much of anything else. Ah, oh, boo. 
Mancini said he would send Chucky to space if enough people wanted that to happen. We actually talked about that on a horror news stream, I feel like a few months ago, right? And I was like, listen, I would, that would be fine. Like, I would be into that. Um, a lot of people did not want that, though, which I get it, but, you know. Um, my last entry was 2019, which really that wasn't that long ago. Um, but yeah, Mancini's last movie was 2017. Oh my god. Uh, chill. Okay. Uh, it was really start direct and video. I want to keep doing new movies. And in fact, I'm in the early stages of starting to develop one now, which is designed to work in tandem with the TV show. You know, the ongoing attempt to try to conquer the universe with Chucky. That's so interesting. Um, the only downside of keeping the continuity together is that if I knew and met a way to tell a story, blah, blah, blah. I just think, like, how... <laughs> How can it be in addition to the TV show? I just feel like that's going to kind of lose a lot of people. I feel like he is definitely going to be sending Chucky to space, which, like, I th I think that's fine. Because for such a self-aware franchise, I feel like it would be, it would be, you know, the, the scream of horror franchises going to space, right? It would be very, it would be very referential and self-referential. And I, I, I think that they could do it well. I also feel like of all the franchises, I would, I would hope and assume that Child's Play would probably get a bigger budget than, you know, like Leprechaun 4 in space. I don't know if the budget would be bigger than Jason X, but like, maybe, maybe. You know, people people put money up for Don Mancini and Child's Play. You never know. It could be fun. It could be good. Anyway, um, oh, Sapphic Cenobite. nice name. I think I've I think I've seen you before. Yeah, prevents me from joining the streams. I'm excited you're here too. Um, yeah, I didn't I didn't know that either for the longest time. Uh, there's a Mary had a little lamb horror movie. Of course there is. <laughs> of course. Uh. No, I, so I don't live near my P.O. box. I share it with my family. That's why I only open subscriber mail like every few months. So, uh, yeah, but I've already pre-filmed like eight or nine videos for this channel and also for my second channel. So I've already like pre-recorded a lot of stuff. Plus, um, I'll also be like, you know, Abigail's going to come out. I'll be putting out a review. I'm going to make videos as I travel, you know. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'll be here. Um, oh, thank you. Me too. I'm really into it now. Like, I'm I'm so excited now that I've actually, like, started writing it. It's just been such a long time coming, you know. Uh, oh, do I think that some of the OG cast members, Andy, Kyle, and Tiffany, plus the kids from the TV series are, will appear... I don't know, because I just don't know what is left to be done with them. I Because I feel like, because in season three, Chucky is sort of having his three quarters life crisis. You know, he's he's like all decrepit and stuff. Um, and so I don't, because otherwise that's what I would want them to kind of explore as uh, you know, the subject matter of a new movie. Beyond that, like, I don't even know. I'm like, what would they even do? What would Chucky's story be? I feel like they would kind of have to reset a little bit, which I'm sure they will. Like, I'm sure by the end of season three, Chucky's going to have figured it out. He's going to transfer himself to like a new doll or something. I don't know. Um, but other than that, I'm thinking like the kids, what is left to be done with them? I felt like their story was kind of over already, except for maybe Lexi, because there's a whole deal with her sister going on in this season. Um, but I don't know, the kids, like, especially if they're going to space, I'm like, why would the kids go to space? I don't think, you know, like, Fiona Dorif, I never get tired of her. I feel like with her character, maybe there's a little bit more there. With Kyle and Andy, probably not. But, and with Tiffany, it's like, how many to how much of their toxic relationship can we keep exploring? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, oh, good. I'm glad you're looking forward to it. Yeah, if there was like Chucky versus Megan, that would be fun. But like it seems like they're really hyping up the Chucky in space thing. So that's what I feel and just instinctually. I feel like that's what they're gonna do. Hello, let's say Chucky in space. Uh, oh, really? I don't know if we've talked about that yet. Um, 
Oh, when am I going to collab with Spooky Astronauts Possessed by Horror? I don't know. I don't know. Especially because I still don't know if I'm doing the Oscars this year. I, like, want to, but, like, I don't want to. <laughs> you know, I just, like, I'm still, I'm in the middle of post-production now for my short, and it just is, like, it's so much coordination. Like, it's so much work. <laughs> Uh, so otherwise I probably would have like wanted to invite them this year, you know, cause I like to mix up the people that I have on to collaborate for the Oscars. Uh, so I would have probably asked them this year, but I just don't know if I'm going to do it. I don't know. Get the feeling that the new movie could be a big grand series finale to the TV show and wrap everything up for that story. I guess. Yeah. It's just like the whole, the whole franchise is connected. So it would have to wrap up like the entire timeline you know, and it would, it would make sense. Cause I'm like, you know, Brad Dorif would, it would probably want to retire soon. And I don't know how he feels about retiring the character. I don't see him in like a lot of the marketing for the show. Um, and I don't know, like, I, I honestly don't know how he feels about, you know, the character and how endeared he is to Chucky and like how much he wants to keep doing it till he dies or something. I'm un I'm unfamiliar. But, um, uh, we'll, s oh, it's gonna be a serious finale. I don't, I, I don't know. I really don't. I couldn't tell you. Thank you. There's news about, uh, The Sims movie. Yeah. I don't think I've heard anything about it since 2007. I don't trust Margot Robbie to make a Sims movie. Why? She made a Barbie movie. Um, it would break the internet. Um, we, like, chat here and there. Like, I'm sure she'd be open to a collab. Um, you know, I just don't know what we would do. Like the Oscars would probably be the most the most obvious collab, probably. Um yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh oh, Scream Dreams is amazing. Barbara Crampton is a regular. They've had guests like, oh, Heather Langenkamp, D. Wallace. Oh that's great. Yeah, I don't know how I haven't heard of that. Uh oh, I appreciate it. We'll do um oh thank you uh i'm always down for a chucky movie but isn't announcing a new movie kind of spoilery for season three i guess kind of yeah yeah uh do you think it'll be a sci-fi channel original oh uh maybe but like no i th i think it could be theatrical because um i mean final destination six they're going theatrical with that uh, I don't know if it's because of praise success back in 2022. I don't really know what inspired that choice, but I feel like they would try to go theatrical, especially if, you know, they're trying to go out with a bang and it's going to be the, the, you know, the, the finale of this whole timeline that's been going on for the past 30 whatever years. I don't know. I have a feeling they would try to go theatrical, but you could be onto something with that. You definitely could be onto something with that. And I wouldn't be that mad about it because sci-fi original movies are so good, honestly. Like the Summer Party Massacre remake and then also uh, Leprechaun Returns. It's great. It was, I mean, it wasn't, but like, you know what I mean? Anyway. Uh, oh, thank you. Oh, what's up to do with Chucky crossovers? Yeah, yeah, that too. I uh, mentioned he wanted to do crossovers. I still like to see Dwarf's Chucky versus Hamill's Chucky. Yeah, there's no, there's no way. Yeah, as unlikely as that is, there's, I just think there's no way, because Mancini was really salty about that remake. I don't believe that he's a fan. <laughs> I don't believe that he's a fan. Ah. Uh, yeah, we need Chucky versus Megan, but then Chucky possesses Megan. Would Megan's AI rule over Chucky's possession? No. No, because, uh, well... I don't know. I'm not a scientist. What do I know? What do I know? But I don't think so. Cause I'm like, well, but like if he's, because the AI is still inanimate, you right. So if Chucky is possessing this inanimate object, then I would just imagine Chucky would have the control, but I don't know that much about possession and I don't know that much about robotics. So I'm the wrong person to ask really. You want to see them both in space? Oh, hello. Yeah, I'd be rooting for a Chucky vs. Megan, although I don't know how likely that is just because 
we haven't even gotten Megan two yet. And I feel like they would kind of want to build that franchise up a little bit before doing any kind of crossover, you know, like Freddy vs. Jason was the 10th movie of that franchise. No, 11th was the 11th movie of that franchise. And the, was it the, it was the, was it the seventh movie of the, of the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise? Yeah, so I don't know, maybe things have changed, but we haven't, you know, we haven't gotten a crossover in a long time. And typically they, you know, they build the franchises up a bit first. But I don't know, because Chucky's been around for so long, maybe I would love that. I would love that, to be honest. Because a crossover, I think I'd find more interesting than trying to, you know, keep keep going with with Chucky and Tiffany. I just don't know how much more is there. Um, they they both killed each other so many times at this point. <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, I could pass the torch to his daughter. So, yeah, eh, perhaps, perhaps. It's just, it's just one of those things that's tough. It's like Mark Hamill did a great job, but uh, it's gonna be a big deal when he passes the mantle on. So I don't know. I don't know who would fill those shoes. Hello, happy Saturday. Um, you think the nostalgia train could work in Chucky's favor, but the twenty nine. Yeah, well, the 2019 remake I didn't think was really about n nostalgia, really. I mean, they the, of course there's homages and references and stuff, but it didn't, I mean, even the concept alone, I mean, AI, like it, it's, it, it's, 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 it's entirely different. I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm, my brain's going a lot faster than my mouth kind of right now. Um, confete and all. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, because AI is just so different. Like, I don't know, the 2019 remake didn't really give me any kind of, like, a nostalgia vibe. It very much, it felt like its own thing to me um, that wasn't trying to, like, you know, rely on nostalgia or anything. Um, Freddy vs. Jason is, is the eighth movie. Oh, New Nightmare. I forgot about New Nightmare. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Uh, being a sci-fi channel movie opens the crossover possibilities. I love their puppet master versus demonic toys. Oh, I didn't know about that. Check it would fit perfectly in those universes. Um, yeah, no, demonic toys. I haven't seen that movie in years, but I remember I did enjoy it. That's like a when 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 was that? That was like '92 or something. I haven't seen any of the sequels, but um, yeah, no, I enjoyed demonic toys anyway. Mega must have crossover with Chucky. Be better to use the remake Chucky so it keeps the integrity of the OG series. Yeah, I I guess so. It's just like Megan was some people don't like to hear it, but Megan was literally just a child's play ripoff from 2019, almost entirely the same movie. Like the uh, so I don't uh, having a crossover with them it's just AI versus AI at that point. Like that's that would be it would be less interesting to me. I think the dynamic is more fun if it's you know, the, the human element of, of Chucky versus AI. That would be more interesting to me, but, um, you know, whatever. I'd still watch it. Uh, it's a ripoff of a Brazilian doll called Fofau. Really? Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, do I love Superbad? I do love Superbad. Yeah. Um, let's, oh, hey, Andrew. I was talking about you earlier. I told the good people that we got uh, lunch after after the premiere this past week. Um, but yeah, let's um, let's see. I say we I say we move on to our second topic because many of you know that Ready or Not has been one of my favorite horror movies of forever and ever, and now it's getting a sequel. And I don't really know anything about it, and I've been really itching to learn more about it. So Smart Weaving is expected to return. Um, I, which is cool. Cause when I, when I first saw like ready or not Two, I was thinking, okay, it's not, it's probably not going to be like a true sequel. They're probably just going to have some other couple and some other girl. And it's just gonna be like the same thing. Um, but I, I have ideas for a sequel, so I'll let you know if there's any plot information. Um, I will let you know if I was right or not. <laughs> okay. So can you use the screen franchise? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so who's Jeff Snyder? I don't know who that is. Director Adam Robitel. Oh, okay. So it's not going to be Matt Batnelli open, open and Tyler Gillette. It's going to be Adam Robitel. I really like the taking of Deborah Logan. Um, I love. Listen, 
I I do kind of like Insidious: The Last Key. It's not his. It's not his fault that it was a prequel, and therefore the stakes were diminished. That's not Adam Robitaille's fault. I really like that Lin Shay was like the main main character of that one. Whatever. Um, and he did Escape Room. He did the Escape Room movies. Underrated director, honestly. I'm not. I'm not mad about that. I. That's great. Okay. So Samara Weaving will return. Yeah. Okay. Um. Read the full report over. Ugh. I gotta go to a different article. Okay, whatever. Um, yeah, Adam Brody. Okay, so film introduced mythology, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Soul Survivor, blah, blah, blah. Okay, uh, we don't know any plot details. Okay, I'll tell you what my... Um, I'll tell you what my uh, prediction was, but okay, so there was more here, apparently. Allegedly. Um, friend, blah, 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 where? Wait, where? tonight's newsletter you'll read about ready or not to what okay whatever that was clickbait anyways um okay so what i would imagine for the sequel because i love the cast of the original movie so much i don't think that they would like go back and you know like just have her marry someone new and then the same thing is happening again i feel like Okay, maybe one of two things. Maybe she would be, you know, really proactive final girl and she would start going after the families in the Lodomus network, right? And anybody that has association with them and whatever, she would maybe be like hunting them. Because if they do, I don't, I don't, like you think that they would recycle the same plot. Okay, the only way that they could sort of recycle the same plot is if somehow whilst whilst burning in hell right the family you know they chat with mr Le, no labelle labelle that's who the that's the the the, the 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 devil or whatever the families are the ladomases i'm so sorry if they chatted with him and they were like listen we like give us one more chance like like reincarnate us like let us you know like unexplode us and then it and then give us another chance to kill her and then, you know, we'll, like, do your bidding or whatever. And then that way, Adam Brody could come back. Oh, Adam Brody could come back. And um, what's his face? The parents, I love I love them um, in the movie. And the, the crazy, like, great aunt or whatever. I'd be on board. I'd be on board. Uh... Let's see. Uh, um, uh, did I watch Totally Killer? I did. I enjoyed it. Um, I'm listen. Oh yeah, uh, Cuckoo. It's now that's gonna be released August August 9th. I'm not mad about that because there was a hot minute there when it like didn't have a release date, and it was supposed to come out like was it 2022? Was that when we first heard about it? Or I don't know. It was supposed to come out last year and then it didn't. Um, so I'm just I'm just glad we have an official release date. There's like a trailer out and everything. I'm really excited for that one. I'm very excited. Uh oh, you need to watch Ready or Not. Uh and I just might have spoiled a lot, but like there's spoilers all over the internet. Uh, because that movie, like, kind of not created, but like really, really popularized the final girl covered in blood trope. Uh, at least in like the modern age, you know, she's not even honorary. She is a scream queen. I mean, she also did like the babysitter movies and stuff. And she, she was in scream six. Um, hurricane Barbie and Harley Quinn tells me she can keep bright and colorful capture the insanity of the many creatures stories in that universe. Uh, uh you mean you don't, think she can capture the insanity of the many but there's not i mean i don't know i don't think that she'd be acting in the sims movie so i'm not really worried about that um she also wouldn't be writing it like she's producing it so um like, like to see my version uh which one which one because there's i don't know I, I feel like it could go one of those two ways but um have I seen Halloween Kills? I love Halloween Kills. I love that movie. It's literally like, it's like my favorite movie of the Halloween franchise. And people don't like hearing it, but it's true. Uh, I don't think, I don't, although <laughs> it doesn't look good for her when they show up. I mean, it doesn't look good for her, but anyway. Uh, yeah, she, she probably will. I mean, she's, you know, she's moved up in the world, certainly. 
But anyway, yeah, we need to get another family or something for Ready or Not 2. I mean, I wouldn't be like opposed to it. Excuse me. I wouldn't be opposed to that if they got another really, really good cast. Because that is the magic of the first movie. The people that they got together, like, they, you know, it would need to be something similar. But then, but like, I don't want a rehash of the first plot, though, is the only thing. So I don't know. I don't know how they would avoid that by bringing in an entirely new cast. Um, unless it's, you know, as I said, she's like going undercover and she's, she's seduced one of the, one of the other families that's, that's has a deal with Mr. LaBelle or whatever. Um, oh, you thought that I was talking about your next? A little bit similar. Yeah. I feel like the Ready or Not guys, they saw your next and they were like, oh, we can make this a lot more ludicrous, <laughs> you know? And then they did. And then they did. Oh, and she was in Mayhem. Yeah. Total Scream Queen. I love Mayhem, by the way. Also stars Steven Yoon. So underrated. Thank you. This is irrelevant. Fresh more news. Uh, one of the handful of appreciates the third season. I love the... Yeah. Oh, it was the first video of mine that I saw. That you saw. Sorry. Um, yeah, no, I love season three. And I haven't I haven't rewatched it since, though, to be honest. But anyway. Uh, yeah, she was in Scream 6. Yeah. She... Um, yeah, well, I won't say, but... As many glaring flaws as it had, I think the story is underrated. I agree. Um, yeah, more credit for being different. Um, no, I agree completely. Completely. Oh, she was in an episode of Ash vs. Evil Dead. She was also in um, Guns Akimbo with Daniel Radcliffe. Nobody ever told me that. And if I knew that, I would have watched that movie so much sooner. She's like the best part of it. And Guns Akimbo, it's like a, it's like a dark comedy. And it's also pretty gory. It's not, it's like... I don't know. It's not a horror movie, um, but it's like a, you know, it's just like a gory action movie, gory action comedy, I guess. Um, so, you know, a lot of you probably like it. It wasn't great, but like Samara Weaving was really good in it. So I would, I would recommend. Hello. Uh, yeah. The girl in your next is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Wild ending on that one. Uh, Oh, yeah, this this is also news. Um, yeah, talk about that briefly. Wolfman got pushed to January of 2025. Might be a good thing. They only started filming less than two weeks ago. Yeah, I know. A lot of, like, I guess that, you know, there was, like, a moment of discourse because people were like, oh, God, it's going to be so bad because it's getting dumped in January. If you guys don't know, Lee one l is making a Wolfman movie with Christopher Abbott. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited about it because I love his Invisible Man, right? Um, and also, like, Lee wan low-key the brains behind the whole operation with James Wan. Like, I'm sorry, but it's true. I'm just saying. Um, so, I still think it's going to be good. I know that they're dumping it in January. Um, and I, uh, like, okay, I understand the reservation because yes, they released Megan in January of 23 and that was like, you know, that was like kind of a hit, but then this past year, what did they release, uh, in January? They released Night Swim. Um, excuse me. Sorry. Boo. It was so bad. <laughs> That was 100% a January dump. So I can understand where people are coming from where they're like, oh, well, you know, there were, you know, Megan was a fluke, whatever. They're reverting back. It's not going to be good. Uh, I don't think that's the case. Like nobody's even, the movie's not even made yet. Like they just started filming it. So um, I think, and you know what, you know what, maybe, maybe, wait, what was the, oh, <laughs> maybe Jason Blum saw my review of Imaginary. If you saw that video, remember I was like, um, Jason Blum, if you're watching this, which I know you are, um, what if you released good movies all year round and January wasn't a dumping ground, huh? What then? What if we made good movies all the time and we didn't, you know, um, so you're welcome. You are welcome <laughs> for that. So I don't know. I still, I think it'll be, oh, I forgot to turn this light on. Uh, oh, wait. Oh, I almost knocked it over. There we go. I just, I hella forgot to turn that on. Anyway, um, yeah, sorry, tirade. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. 
Like my idea of the family coming back. Yeah. Uh, any way to justify having that great cast return? Yeah. Um, I like the idea of her hunting down the... Yeah. Oh, the extended family members. That too. Sure. Yeah, that'd be fun. <clears throat> um, yeah, I can see Satan granting the little dumbest another opportunity. To... Yeah, right? Right? Because, you know, she... She, she got him, you know? Yeah, she's really fun. And she has a crazy name in that movie, too. I forget her character's name. But, yeah, she's the best part of it. Um, Let's see. What were we talking about? Yeah, Wolfman. Yep. I know, I'm excited, too. Uh, I haven't seen A Clockwork Orange. I've not seen that yet. Um certainly worth the wait i think so too i mean i would i would prefer that they not rush it right like if they need more time that's fine that is fine <coughs> movies about games yeah what if someone had another uh yeah another life card true bring back to life card that's a good yeah that's a good one yeah upgrade was fun i finally watched that for the first time recently yeah uh, uh Wednesday season two got delayed again. I'm not surprised about that. Weren't they promising the next season in like 2025? But like she was already, you know, she was filming for like Beetlejuice 2, and I don't know. Jenna Ortega's she's a busy gal. She's a busy, busy gal. So it doesn't surprise me. Also, because like streaming streaming companies need to get their shit together like the all the stuff that's going on i don't know because if you follow any of like the the film news sources on like twitter or anything the past few days i've seen nothing but like oh you know season three of euphoria is going to be delayed indefinitely season three of euphoria in 2024 the cast has been you know released to explore other projects oh season three is going to be six episodes and Oh, it's Sam Levinson being considered to be removed from like the HBO deal, whatever. No, the cast has fought to keep Sam Levinson on for you. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> like, I don't care. Figure, figure your shit out and leave me out of it. Okay. Too much, too much news. I don't care. Um, I don't know how I got, but, 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 but then also it's like, it's just very reminiscent of Netflix with Stranger Things and mess. They do, I think they just announced that season five is going to require like nine more months of filming. I'm like, what are y'all doing? What are you doing? Anyway. Um, yeah, this was because, um, what was it? Uh, I forget what company landed the rights. I know it was like Miramax was like one of them, but um, yeah, they're uh, oh saying it's going back to the original now. Great. It wasn't like we literally just did that six years ago, but okay. All right, uh, all right. Um, I don't know. I never watched the show. I don't. I don't know. I don't even think fans of the show still care. Um, I know that fans of the show wanted a third season. But now I like I've seen, you know, people are like, just give them like a two hour like finale episode and just call it a day. Anyways, uh, it's just my point was that streaming services need to get their shit together. It's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. You wonder if the new Wolfman movie is going to be like the invisible man that it's about toxic masculinity in the form of a monster. I would imagine so. Like it could be in relationship of uh, something else. Yeah, no, no. I think so because the. Like, the way that he modernized The Invisible Man, it was so unique. Like, it was so different um, to, like, any of my, you know, my understandings of the original movies, which I have not seen. And, like, you know, Hollow Man with Kevin Bacon, I haven't seen those. But he really brought it into the modern era, and it was so poignant. And it, I love that movie. I love that movie. So I have full faith that he'll, you know, he'll be able to do something similar with The Wolfman. Um, I don't know that it'll be about you know, toxic relationships again. I guess part of me just kind of hopes that it wouldn't be. Um, if anything, I would imagine that he would probably take it to more of like an American werewolf in London type place where that was about like, you know, just Jewish fear kind of. Um, so I, I would imagine he would, he would do something a little bit more like that as opposed to something similar to the Invisible Man again. At least I get that. That's just kind of like what I want. But anyway, um, I did see this. Yeah. 
makes me sad too because i like that show i know on a cliffhanger no less i agree you prefer they don't rush it yeah um with ryan uh ryan gosling is no longer starring in it they cast christopher abbott which i'm really not mad about to be honest uh last wolfman bombed i enjoyed oh there was a 2010 film um i have not seen that one yet yeah they're in their 50s now <laughs> Oh, God. And now there's fresh discourse with Millie Bobby Brown, who was just interviewed. And she was like, yeah, I actually don't watch movies. I can't just sit down and watch a movie. My brain doesn't can't sit down and watch something for that long. It's like, don't say that. You didn't have to say that. Don't say that. She just, that girl, she ends up being loud and wrong a lot of the time and she just there's always just so much hate her way and it's like you don't have to say these things you know anyway oh appreciate it thanks for being here yeah i think they they announced that a little bit ago i think we've talked about that um but i yeah no i don't think i don't think i'm going to be watching season 5 don't think i'm going to care at that point but uh oh francisco hey hi um yeah there was so much baseball in night swim that was weird that was weird um yeah no i'm gonna start a physical media collection i'm so tired of these yeah the, the streaming comp the streaming comp comp what could that stand for i'm not you'll have to let me know i'm i'm not putting it together i can't wait for like i was double come out on physical media to watch on halloween agreed um uh yeah when your favorite show on tv at a season every year ready for you and there were 20 22 episodes and there because also like another thing with that is like when it was coming out weekly the writers could get like that instant feedback and the show would be better for it you know um and now they just like they don't have that it doesn't really exist anymore anyway um oh hey mike and delic hey oh competition competition yeah no i me too i don't like i mean i have tubi i have like my parents are you know paying for like there's prime peacock paramount and apple that's like what we have right now and i like don't really even use them i have so much physical media that i need to get through i don't even get, like do, do browsing on streaming is exhausting like i have not kept up with that at all i feel like there has not been anything like culturally relevant on streaming like in i don't know i feel like it's been years i like just n nothing is nothing good is going on um besides like yellow jackets that is a great show that was a great show um but i just don't care i don't i don't i don't need it i don't need it they need to get their shit together and I think it's going to be, like, several years before we get to a good place with that again. But, anyway. <clears throat> uh, yeah, for stuff that's, like, the final movie, final season, they want to make it perfect. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I had an issue with streaming because I was putting together a playlist. I was waiting for the CSNY version of Woodstock to be on Spotify again. Oh, it's up now. Um... I'm glad that you made it. I feel like it's been a while. Uh, yeah, what's... I know, what's the purpose of relaying how much you dislike a medium you deem a chore? I know, it's really... It's just really weird. Like, I, I mean, it's not it's not surprising because she was, like, forced into acting by her parents as a kid. So, it's not surprising that she, like, doesn't have a passion for it or anything. She's just, like, the workhorse for her family, I'm assuming. Um... But, like, why would you say that? Like, I don't understand. It's not like her employers care. It's not like Netflix cares. She's, like, you know, she's their little... She's their little money man. Their little money maker. Oh, companies. Oh, got you. Got you. I appreciate that. You have a good one, too. Uh, yeah, all I can think is that's why there's so many terrible movies, like the new Godzilla movie. Um, yeah. I, she's uh is she in the new one too i don't know i don't know i do want to see that movie this week though those movies are so stupid they're really they're really fun in theaters <laughs> i had a dream i had a nightmare actually about king kong last night 
it was um it was really weird i was like in this very modern house and so there was like a living room and then like the wall and then like the bedroom and on either side of the house there were like these huge glass windows and i knew that king kong was coming but there were like a bunch of people and i guess it was like some sort of party or something and i was like these idiots like they just were hanging out in the living room and i was like king kong is like he's coming so like i'm like i'm gonna hide and so I went and I found this closet and I found this little thing to like hide in. Thought I was being so smart. And then King Kong literally ripped off the entire roof of the house. And then, but he didn't kill me. Like, I don't know if he killed everybody else. And then I don't know how I got there, but then I was like on this giant island and there were so many giant like monkeys everywhere. It was like King Kong's family. Um, it was a weird dream. Anyway, uh, yeah, let's um move on. <laughs> Anyways, uh, oh, you're gonna see problem used today. I've heard good things too. I've heard good things too. Um, let's talk about Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey 3. Yeah, <laughs> so I personally really liked Blood and Honey 2. I had a great time at the premiere, it was really fun. Um, and 3 has already been confirmed. There was like a little, um, so at the premiere, there was like a little video of the producer Scott and the director, and they were talking about the whole Pooh universe and like. <gasps> excuse me and like what other movies were coming and they were like yep and number three is happening whatever so uh yeah it's been given the green light and uh i'm i'm just here i want to see if they're going to confirm like the director the same director is also doing it but um this is super fun gonna have a bigger budget than the previous films so the first one i believe that their total budget came to like 70 or eighty thousand dollars um blood and honey part two was four hundred thousand so i'm really curious about the actual numbers on this one i don't think they're going to give it to us but uh, will be will be higher than the previous. They're going to introduce new characters, including Rabbit, the Heffalumps, and the Woozles. I'm like, yes, give us the Heffalumps and the Woozles. Um, and then we're also yeah getting uh, Bambi, Peter Pan, Pinocchio, Sleeping Beauty. Yep, and then Pooniverse Monsters Assemble 2025. I do know they showed a little clip of the new Bambi movie, so I think that that one must be close to completion. Um, I don't know about these other ones. Like, I don't know if these have been started, like where they're at with that. Uh, I would expect that this would probably get delayed because this is going to come out like the whole team up coming out next year. That's kind of crazy. I don't really foresee that, uh, happening, but you know, um, yeah, it's one of our, even some of the harshest critics of the first film. Yeah. Including me. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. Um, yeah. Detail, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So there's no more, uh, Clickbait article, John Squires. Why? Anyways, I thought we'd get a little bit more information about that. So whatever, Jagged Edge Productions, they're ordering up the third film, but it doesn't say who's who's going to be directing it. I mean, I guess we can just assume it's probably going to be Reese Frank Waterfield anyway. Um, how many of you guys got out this past week and actually went and saw the, the second movie? Oh, hey, hey, Ken. Hey, Ken. Hope you have a good one too. Enjoy the family. Enjoy, enjoy. Oh, I'm excited for this one too, In a Violent Nature. I've heard of it. I don't really know anything about it, and I'm just kind of trying to keep it that way. So, yes, yes. Um, <clears throat> have I heard of VHS? Uh, no, VHS Plus, new free streaming service. Oh, it wants to be Tubi, I think. I feel like Tubi is the only Tubi. Because um, there's also... Along with Tubi, if you have a Roku TV, you also get like the Roku channel and some stuff for free with ads there. We really don't need another thing. Just like how I feel bad, but just like I don't, I can't imagine that Screenbox is doing that well. Do any of you guys have Screenbox? I could see maybe because like it's a really, really good deal, but they're just, when I checked that out like last year or something, there just was nothing good on it. Um, and Shutter already exists. So, no, it's just there's too much competition. Like, uh, I did, and I don't know why because I haven't seen the new movie yet. I haven't really been thinking about it that much, but anyway, um, mentally, yeah, I, w I was like, I was, you know, I was acting pretty smart. Um, oh, it was great fun. Monsters are great. Yeah, I loved the first one that came out in like 2021, right? I had a blast. I had a blast with that. Um, Oh, they didn't believe that horror movies will uplift you. Yeah, I really think that they do. Well, you know, because there's like dark comedies, but then also you watch them and you're like, well, my life isn't this bad. Isn't that great? You know? So, 
Uh, yeah, the wait. Yeah, Blood Money 3. Yeah, the second one just came out this past week. Yeah. Um, King Kong vs. Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. Uh, can't take. Are we talking about the Pooh universe? Can't take the Pooh universe seriously. Yeah, the um, the <laughs> King Kong is kind of good. It's. I was well, like I don't think I even talked to them. I don't think I even tried to save anybody else. I'm pretty sure I just tried to save myself. I was like, well, maybe if he kills them, like then he'll he won't even think about me. <laughs> Yeah. Um I know Marvel took five years. Well, no, because Marvel took oh well yeah, because the first Avengers was like 2012 or whatever. Yeah, no, you're right, you're right. Yeah. It sounds like the scene in the OG film where he climbs the building and abducts Anna for climbing. Oh, I haven't even I've never seen the original movie. I've definitely seen the one with like Jack Black in it and what was the one? Skull Island. I've seen that one. Um, oh, Winnie the Pooh feet Terrifier? That actually would make so much sense. Like, actually, that would, yeah. Um, I'm sure we're gonna get the, the trailer by, like, because that's coming out at the end of October, right? Like, October 25th? So we're probably getting the trailer, uh, probably not to, like, summer. I was gonna say maybe soon, but probably at the earliest, maybe, like, May, June? So, I don't know, maybe kind of soon. Um, yeah, I can't front Tigger's appearance in person was enticing enough to watch. Yeah, no, he was good. He has some, he dropped some really, really good one liners. And honestly, it was a fun time. Um, it was, no, they had like, it was in theaters, I think, for like three days or something. Yeah. Uh, they're bringing, they're bringing Rabbit and they're bringing the Heffalumps and Woozles. Haven't heard anything about Kangaroo, Kanga and Roo. Oh, and Eeyore. Yeah, it'd be fun. Uh, yeah, I think I think they will. Um, because that was like the main criticism, I think, of of the this this most recent one was like it was a little bit too self-serious, which I agree. But yeah, not on my bingo cart, same, same. Yeah, I have Shutter and Tubi for yeah, right? So uh it's real like I wouldn't personally recommend Scream Bucks, honestly. You would have enough on Shutter, and yeah, Screenbox movies keep showing up on Tubi. I, yeah, I just don't really see that service lasting. To be honest, it needs a makeover. It needs a makeover. Anyway, real world seems better in comparison. That's what I'm saying. You may have problems, but at least nothing is trying to eat your soul, right? I like to get some representation. Let's get a Dora the Explorer horror movie. Dora the Impaler. Oh my god, you should make that. You should make that movie. I know it. I know it. I, right now, though, I am doing all my research on the Universal Classic Monsters. We're getting, you know, my Frankenstein deep dive is coming up. Uh, not this week, but next week. So, you know, once I get through that, then eventually, like, I'll go back and I'll do all my research on Godzilla and King Kong. And it's just uh, one thing at a time. Oh, hey, Austin. Glad you made it. Glad you made it. Um, let's, okay, let's move on to the next thing, because we still have a lot to get through, and I've already been streaming for, like, an hour. Okay, this, uh, Tiago's still here, I know, I know you're excited about this. So, yeah, Stephen King, James Wan, and Osgood Perkins horror movie, The Monkey Raps Filming. Crazy they're only just now announcing the cast, because it's nuts. And also, it is Osgood Perkins. I don't, because he went by, I swear he went by Oz, Oz Perkins, for a bit, whatever. Um, look at all these ads for the first on. Uh, I'm seeing that next week, Bill. Um, okay, it's a short horror story that appeared in Skeleton Crew from 18 or er, from 1880 from 1985. Oh, also featured The Mist. Okay, all right, I like The Mist. So Theo James, I don't know if he's done horror before, but like. Let's get it. Um, Elijah Wood, yup, and uh Rowan Campbell. Let's get it. Oh, uh, uh. oh my god. I think this is an eyebrow hair. That was on my tongue. That was crazy. Um, yeah, so he if you're not familiar, he I loved Gretel and Hansel from 2020. Um, wait, he also did long lit this man, his mind. He is on the grind. That's crazy. 
Uh, so in the monkey, when twin brothers Hal and Bill discover their father's old monkey toy in the attic, a series of gruesome deaths start occurring all around them. The brothers decide to throw the monkey away and move on with their lives, growing apart over the years. Uh, but when the mysterious deaths begin again, the brothers must reunite to find a way to destroy the monkey for good before it takes the lives of everyone close to them. Cool. <laughs> um, and James Wan is producing uh, with Michael Clear, oh, who also did Megan. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Cool, cool, cool. And oh, they got a producer from Babylon. Oh, Babylon Hive. Rise up. Rise up. Love Babylon. Love Babylon. Um, yeah, this is, I'm excited for this. I'm really pumped. Great cast. Great cat. Love to see Rowan Campbell, like, still doing horror, despite the vitriol he faced from Halloween Ends. Uh, he's still hanging around with us. I feel we should be thankful for that. So, oh, my nose is itchy. Ugh. Allergies? Anybody? Anybody else? Ugh. Even with the rain. Ugh. Uh, oh, there's gonna be a... Was there going to be a... It's not part of their Pooniverse. I know that. Because uh, I don't know if... Is Cinderella in the public domain? I don't think so. Anyway. Uh, Screenbox and Shutterstack like to be allow average people to upload. I feel like that's what Screenbox does because of the Screenbox originals or, uh, or exclusives. They're exclusives, excuse me. They're really bad. Like, they're really bad. Um, Like, they're really bad. Yeah, Theod I told you. I told you, Jog. I was excited. Uh, well, then I've got great news for you. Uh, they're still... That's still in development, though. Del Toro takes his time, you know. Um, I repeat, Theo James. Oh, yeah, a horror version of Swiper? I could rock with that. Yeah, absolutely. Um... Excuse me, yes, sir. The simple monkey toys always scared me. I remember when I was in a kid in Jim Carrey's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Oh, chill. Remember when all the who's are singing and he's just like had it and then he like he puts his head in between the giant symbols of the monkey and it's like it's like banging his head and he's like, oh. remember that? That used to scare me when I was like a little kid. Uh so yeah, I guess I can say same. Those little toys, they're they're freaky looking. And then, oh, it also shows up in Big Fat Liar with Paul Giamatti and Amanda Bynes is in that one. And the guy from Malcolm in the Middle, uh, Frankie something. Yeah, I remember he has a little funny bones, his little monkey. They're weird looking. Yeah. Uh, you know, I didn't like the Black Cuff's daughter, but a lot of people do. Worth checking out, probably. Oh, his dad is Anthony Perkins? Shut up. Nepo babies. They're everywhere. Skeleton Key was a short story compilation. Don't know if I read that one. I read Night Shift. Uh, Cast looks good. Yeah, I know, right? It should be good. And Elijah Wood. Oh, I'm so happy he's doing more horror. I'm so happy about it. I The last like horror-esque thing that he did, I think that I saw, was that really weird show where he imagined his dog as a man in a dog suit and it talked to him. I know that wasn't really horror, but it was really weird. And it was, I don't know, it was psychological, it was strange. Um, so anyway. Uh oh, Melissa is gonna be at horror con a few hours away from me. Ooh, go, 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 go. Do it. Do it. Wait, Snow White and Mad Hatter and Rapunzel are joining the Puniverse? I just saw their whole spiel and I didn't even know about that. That's crazy. I do get hiccups a lot. I think I told you guys when I was little, I got hiccups so often. My mom took me to the doctor because she thought that there was something wrong with my diaphragm. And the doctor was just like, I don't know. Like, she just gets hiccups a lot. Like, she, it's fine. Like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> anyway. Uh, what is he swiping? <laughs> I don't know. People's lives, I guess. Uh, any updates? That's releasing next month. Boy Kills World. I think that's it's coming out on like the like the 26th or something, I think. Um, indie horror short reviews going. Uh, yeah, in my March recap, because I've watched I've watched some horror shorts this past month. So, yeah, I'll talk about that soon. I shall. Uh, the monkey from Toy Story 3. 
Why can't I remember that? Is that like one of the um one of the teddy bears goons is like one of those monkeys? I can't remember. I haven't seen those in a while, but yeah. Yeah, Wilfred, that was the show. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I never finished that show. Uh yeah, he did series for almost a decade. Yeah, wasn't he in um wasn't he? Yeah, he was in White Lotus, right? Yeah. And also he was like the reason why anybody watched the Divergent movies, to be real honest, I think. <laughs> Pretty sure. Uh, I've not seen Maniac. I've not seen that. Um, <clears throat> swiping organs? Ew. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Sleeping Beauty. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. I, oh, hey. Welcome. Uh, or Fingers. I'd like that too. Oh, that'd be so freaky. You could definitely make a horror scene where, like, you know, he's like, whoosh. He, like, swoosh. You see, like, a shadow, like, go across the, you know, right in front of the lens. And then, like, you know, somebody's, oh, my finger. <laughs> And he just keeps taking fit. That'd be great. Um, okay, let's uh, let's 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 move on. Um, everything else is like you know small. These are like bite-sized bits of news. Everything else, uh, but we get the cast of Fear Street. So yay! This was oh wait, but this was March twenty sixth. I think somebody else has been announced as well, but we'll see. So I don't think I know any of these people except okay. So Susanna's son was in the Idol. I did not watch the Idol. Um, the summer, I, the summer I turned pretty, I've heard of that. I've also not seen that from American Pie. Uh, I don't know. Do you guys recognize any of these people? I, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, so prom season at Shadyside High is underway and the school's uh, wolf pack of it girls is busy with its usual sweet and vicious campaigns for the crown. But when a gutsy outsider is unexpectedly nominated to the court and the other girls start mysteriously disappearing, the class of 88 is suddenly in for one hell of a prom night. Uh, it's a little, it's like a little basic, but whatever, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, so, okay, producers, uh, sign announcement news. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, so it's based on the prom queen. But, okay, do you guys remember way back in the day? It was announced that Watcher director Chloe Akuno was directing the new Fear Street movie, and it's been crickets ever since. And I'm like, did you lie to me? Because how dare? How dare? Watcher, what? 2022, insane year for horror. Gonna go down in the history books. One of the best years for horror of all time. And Watcher was my favorite horror movie of that entire year. Uh-huh. Yeah. So... If they took that away from me, if they are taking that away from me, a Chloe Kino directed Fear Street movie, I'll riot. I'll simply riot. Uh, but there's been there's been like no ooh, sorry, there's been like no there's been no other update about that, and uh, I don't appreciate that. Oh, now my monitor is in the in the frame. Okay, there we go. Fixed it. Fixed it. Um, let's see. What do you think? What do you think? This turned into a writing room for Dora the Impaler. <laughs> I think I think I I think I want Dora the final girl, I think. And Swiper would be a great, be a great villain. Um how it continues with Queer Leads like the first trilogy did. Yeah, I know. We didn't really get any more information. I feel like it's not that likely just because I feel like they'd want to go in a new direction and they're going with the really basic kind of prom night theme and the whole, you know, the popular girls that are campaigning for the crown, blah, blah, blah. Ooh, mean girls, you know, how original. So I kind of doubt that it will be gay. But how nice would that be? You know, you recognize? What else has he done? Uh, haven't seen any of them. Oh, they're so good. They're so good. I love them. Uh, I've not seen Red Rocket either. I saw him in uh, Street Fighter film 2009. Oh, one of the worst things you've ever seen. Nice. <laughs> Can't make, yeah, exactly. So this one, like, I, I, uh, I thought that they would keep doing, I thought that they would kind of like keep up the 90s era of R.L. Stein stuff with Fear Street because, you know, they the that trilogy was very 90s um i wonder if they're not doing that because the the brand new like goosebumps tv show 
was like halfway set in the 90s. So they're like, okay, well, let's not, you know, make another 90s Fear Street, whatever. But I'm like, no, the 90s are back. In fact, what? I just threw that. Y2K is actually back already. So I, but whatever. I would have preferred not another 80s thing, but I don't know. I'm still, I'm still looking forward to it. Yeah, sounds much more generic and closer to the book. Yeah, I think I would have preferred Clue. I know! I keep, sorry, I keep wiggling my camera. So it's going to be a throwback, which should be fun. Uh, but haven't we gotten our 80s nostalgia out of our systems yet? I know! Feels so 2010s. Uh, right? Right? She could have taken it in a more interesting direction. I probably would have, uh, probably would have made more sense to have a female director. Yeah. I don't, but do we even know? Okay, let me, uh, let me Google it. Who is directing Fear Street Prom Night? Matt Palmer. Boo. I'm sorry. Not, it's not personal. I don't know who that is, but boo. What the hell? Ugh. It reminds me of like, oh, wait. Okay, wait. Here's a more recent article. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Um, wait, I don't know. This might not be that relevant. Uh, hold on. Let me see if there's any more details here. It might not be. Does it say who the director is? No. But they also announced that um, what's her face from Barbie is gonna be starring in it, and I don't think they have. No, they they don't. No, never mind. Okay, never mind. But yeah, the girl, the um, girl that played the daughter in Barbie. She also was announced, I think, as one of the leads of the new Fear Street, which that's cool. I'm, I'm all for that. I'm all for, you know, popular actors coming over to the horror genre. I'll take it. So, whatever. But it just, it reminds me of, like, Twilight, how the first Twilight movie was so successful and was directed by a woman. And then the entirety of the rest of the franchise was directed by men. It's like, give me a break. Give me a break. Anyway. Um, uh, yeah, no, I can't, I can't juggle it either. I don't, I literally don't pay for a single one of them myself, except for, I get like an ad version of Hulu as like an extension of my Spotify, I think, but I don't pay for a single one of them. I'm on my parents and then I just have physical media because it's too much. It is, I agree. No, it's their best original product. I'm like, I can't think of anything else off the top of my head, to be honest. Um. I'm sure a lot of people will be like, Stranger Things, but, or like, I don't know. I mean, I love Wednesday too, but I like, I like Fear Street more than Wednesday, I think. Uh, <clears throat> so anyways, uh, yeah, the late 20th century homage media has been oversaturated. I select another decade, literally any other decade. Like X went for the 1970s. That was great. That was great. Let's do that. Or the 90s. Or, you know, or heaven forbid, we can already do the 2000s, but whatever. Whatever. Okay, up next. Up next. Uh, okay, since we're talking about this already, goosebumps. David Schwimmer, I guess, I don't know if he'll be a lead, but I would assume his role would be of a similar size to Justin Long in the first season. This is really interesting to me because, like, I have not seen anything that he's done since Friends, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, but he did American Crime Story. I don't remember when that was. That was several years ago now, though, at this point. That was about um, O.J. Simpson, right? That was, uh, did, 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 that was, Ryan Murphy produced that, right? Anyways, so it's coming back for a brand new second season. They'll feature a new cast, a new setting, and a new story, which is like, okay, okay all right. So teenage siblings discover a threat within their home, setting off a chain of events that unravel a profound mystery. As they delve into the unknown, the duo find themselves entangled in the story of five teenagers who mysteriously vanished in 1994. And uh, like, not, okay, let me hold my tongue. Schwimmer will star in the role of Anthony, described as a former botany professor and divorced parent of teenage twins, whose world takes a tumultuous turn as he juggles the responsibilities of overseeing an aging parent while having kids, while having his kids for the summer. Okay. So it just sounds really similar to the first season. Like, I swear to God, like, I'm sure that they're going to do the exact same thing where like half of it takes place in the 90s and then half of it is in present day. And it's like do two different groups of teenagers. Like, also, ugh. 
Also, with the first season, the ending was kind of insane. I didn't think that it had been completely wrapped up. I'm not getting into spoilers. I didn't think that it had been completely wrapped up. And also, I thought the whole intention with the first season was to, like, get us really attached to these characters. Like, I did not expect that they had any intention to be like, well, full reset, new cast, new setting, new everything. Like, I thought we were supposed to like those old characters and, like, want to keep following them. I What is the... We live in a poisoned world of limited series. I'm telling you, I don't. That is very watered down. That's gone. Okay. Um. Anyway, oh, that that was already kind of a horror show. Oh, you know what else was? Cat dog. Hmm. Mm -mm. Nope. Nope. Uh. No, I've not seen this yet. Uh, um, yeah, why not horror based on the 50s or 60s? I agree. The 60s were so fun. Um, I mean, the 60s, like a lot of the horror, it was, you know, we were in great big mansions, great big haunted mansions and, you know, stuff like that. I, I, well, I guess, I guess Mike Flanagan kind of was bringing the 60s back with like the haunting of Hill House and the haunting of Bly Manor, you know, um, those are both stories that originated in like the 50s and 60s, I think. So, or well, the first adaptations were like the 50s and 60s, but you know, I like I would like more of that. Give us more mansion horror. I'm fine with that. Goosebumps should be an anthology. The timelines get so messy. It's yeah, like so yeah, because the first so the first season, it's like each episode was kind of about one of the original Goosebumps books. So it was just, it was messy, but I'm like, if you're going to start that way, then just, I don't know, continue that way, maybe. But then they give you like a group of characters that are there for the entire season. And yeah, it's a mess. It's a mess combining all the elements of the different Goosebumps stories. It's a lot of double mumbo jumbo going on. Um, but whatever. I Look, not my monkeys. Okay. Not my problem. Schwimmer is going to be the concerned dad role, which is fine for him. I don't know if I could see him as a villain or anything. No, definitely not. I don't think I could take him seriously. Uh, so he's staying on brand, uh, hoping the new show does something new. It just sounds so similar. Like, it sounds pretty generic. I don't know. Uh, hello. You loved Cat Dog. I think I watched it. Not that much, but it was fright. It was weird. It was a weird show. Uh, yeah, I think it's, they're doing it right. Questionably, what story they're going to tell. We'll see. I mean, people are worshiping the early 2000s, especially like mostly with fashion is how it's coming back. But we're not really getting, you know, early 2000s period piece movies yet. It will come. It will come. Uh, in the 70s, we worship the 50s. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, it does, but also like... I don't know. Just the 80s nostalgia thing has been working for a long time, so they're still doing it. I know. I agree. I agree completely. It was really weird. Thank you. Uh, David Schwimmer joining Goosebumps. So a person I liked in the 90s is joining a franchise I loved in the 90s. Yeah. Uh, he also recently starred in a comedy series called Intelligence on Peacock. Oh, I didn't know that. He's doing comedy. I'd be interested in that. Yeah. Fall of the House of Usher and 60s horror vibes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Mike Flanagan likes the 60s. He does. That was my favorite thing he's ever done. Um, yeah, cat dog. Grandma adored that one. Your grandma liked that one? It was the kid version of the human centipede. That's what, yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is. Um, uh, or like, even bring a horror setup along in the future. Yeah, like, uh, well, I'm not crazy about, uh, Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. I'm not crazy about like dystopian horror. I feel like dystopian movies work better as sci-fi or action, you know, because um, there's already an undercurrent of horror to dystopia that it's like, I don't know. I just, I'm not, I'm just not crazy about dystopia stuff. I mean, I really, I liked I Am Legend. I just rewatched that for the first time since I was a kid and I, I quite enjoyed it. But um, anyway, yeah. Okay, more bite-sized news. Let's get, let's let's get through this. Um, oh yeah, Shawnee Smith. I haven't. I don't know anything about this yet. But Shawnee Smith stars in a Halloween slasher movie releasing in April. Which at first I was like, oh no, like is it not going to be good? Why are they putting it out in April? But April's halfway to Halloween, and we'll watch it. We'll be there. You know, uh, called Bloodline Killer. Oh, we've got the trailer already. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not going to watch it, but you can watch it. 
Um, select theaters. Oh, select theaters. Uh, oh, I'm going to be out of the country. I'm probably not going to get to see it in theaters. On oh, a man, April 26th. That's really soon. Less than a month. Uh, directed by Anton no no Novakovic. Uh, okay, not familiar. It's being described as a terrifying horror thriller that follows Moira Cole, who endeavors to rebuild her shattered life after the murder of her family at the hands of her deranged and obsessed cousin. Okay. All right. Taryn Manning, I don't know. I don't know any of these people. I can't put a face to any of their names. Uh, all right. Oh, one of the stars also wrote the screenplay. Oh, oh, two of the stars wrote the screenplay. Okay. Produced by Rob Simmons. I wish that they would do little parentheses and like tell us what else they've done. But maybe this is their first feature. You know, maybe we're going to have some breakout directors. I don't like this poster. I don't like this. Um, first impressions, not good. But I'd like to think that Shawnee Smith just spit. I'd like to think that Shawnee Smith has, you know, selective taste. She's, you know, she does good stuff. She doesn't do a lot of stuff. So if she, if she chose to do this, I'm, 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 I would like to believe that it's because it's good. <laughs> But I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, I found that interesting. I feel like um, that's not big news. I don't. I would imagine it's a pretty low budget film, and they haven't had a lot for marketing. So just spreading the word. Just spreading the word. Uh, 1950s is due for worship because of the Cold War. I I guess so. I just feel like that's might hit a little too close to home for current shit. Um. Grim Adventures of Bill and Mandy. I don't think I ever saw that, actually. He was in the... He was an apt pupil. I just read that book for the first time. Uh, yeah, same. Same. Um, yeah, I mean, I go for it, you know? Give us a little, little description. See if we can help you out. Uh, never seen iRobot. Never seen that one. Uh... Looks like Crossbones from Marvel Civil War. I'm unfamiliar. To me, it was giving me a little bit of like a little tiny bit, a little bit of like a predator vibe. Just a little bit. I think it was just like the mouth situation. And then just with like the skull. It was, I don't know. It just looked like a little bit basic. I'm that's what I'm saying. What is that mask? I don't, I don't know. Jenny Smith, I'm sad. Me too. Me too. Wait, she does she have another? Well, I guess, well, if she's re returning for Saw 11, then yeah, I guess so. Um, but is she doing something else? Poster's weak sauce. Yeah. Yeah. Nar. <laughs> yeah. I don't appreciate my discipline in not watching trailers. Yeah. It's, um, it serves me really well. You know, it's, it's, it's worth it. Clear. Nar. Where are my H2O girlies? Where are you at? Um, thank you. Cat dog was weird. Yeah. During a time when most cartoons were weird. That's why I love it. Uh, the weirdest part of cat dog is a movie. Wait, there's a movie which answered a big question. You're just going to leave us on that cliffhanger. Uh, me too. Me too. I wish that there was a little bit more information about her character or I guess I don't cause I don't want it to be spoiled, but like, you know, it's a, also, it's a slasher. So it could potentially be like really basic. So I don't know. Maybe there's not that much to tell, but uh, you'd hope that she wouldn't have to take on such small roles. It could be a situation where the only thing she's known for is Saw, but here's hoping. Yeah, here's hoping, you know, um, will I be watching Civil War? I, I don't think so because I'm going to be traveling when it comes out and I got to prioritize seeing Abigail, obviously. Um, and then I, I just don't know how much I'm going to be getting out to the cinema while I'm abroad is the only thing kind of sucks. So we'll see. Pro probably not. I'm trying to cram in a bunch of movies at the theater this week uh, before I go. So I'm going to try. I'm going to see uh, Godzilla vs. Kong. I'm going to see Monkey Man and the First Omen this next week. <laughs> so. um, Yes, I love the Creep Show series. I love it. Oh, I love it uh cuckoo um august 9th i think yeah reminded me of the terror mask from the game splatterhouse 3 i'm unfamiliar 
I am unfamiliar. Uh, okay, let's see. What else do we got? We've got two more things to talk about. So actually, oh, you guys. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. I'm li okay. So I'm going to this premiere tonight. And uh, so it's it's from Asylum, which is like, if I'm not mistaken, Asylum also did like Sharknado or does movies of that nature. I don't, so it's probably not going to be good, but like, whatever. Yeah. Michael Madsen assembles his own monster squad in a new indie horror movie. So, okay. Um, the dark universe may have gone up in flames, but that's not stopping other studios from unofficially making their own Universal Monsters mashup. So I think this is going to be fun. Um, it also, it came out video on demand yesterday, so you might be able to watch it at home already. Um, yeah, a dying Dr. Frankenstein is determined to meld the world's strongest monsters into a singular, unstoppable creation. Now the monsters, including Dracula, Werewolf, and the Invisible Man, must work together to stop him before it's too late. Yeah, so, um, let's see. Yeah, directed by Jose Prendes, who did The Exorcist. Uh, the reason why I'm so excited about this is because, well, for, you know, going to premieres is always fun, but also because, you guys, it doesn't even say it in this article. John Squires, where is the, wh wh where is the journalistic, you know, I don't want to, I'm, I'm not trying to shit on his, like, journalistic integrity. I'm, it's a joke. I'm sorry. But he didn't even mention the fact that it's being scored by Harry Manfredini. Friday the 13th, anyone? And I saw that on the RSVP list, Harry Manfredini is going to be at the premiere tonight. So I'm really going to try to meet him and maybe get a picture with him. <laughs> um, so I'm just putting that out there so that I may may speak that into existence i also did not know that that man was 80 years old and i was thinking because the premiere is not until 10 p.m i was like oh god like i don't know if i'm gonna make it out to that one that's kind of late for me if an 80 year old is gonna be making it to this premiere then so can i god damn it um so yeah that um is exciting i guess he also scored the exorcists which um jose prendes also did and I'm, like, not really familiar with that movie. I don't know The Exorcist. I don't think that one came out to theaters. I don't think so. It's a, it's on Prime. I think that's where it released initially. Um, and that one stars Doug Bradley. So he's top build. I don't know how, how big his role is in it. But that one stars Doug Bradley. I haven't seen that one. Um, and Manfredi also scored that one. And he also scored this uh, monster mashup movie. So I'm pumped. Let you guys know how it goes, you know. Um, let's. I oh yeah, Monkey Man. It's coming out this next next weekend. Next weekend, I'm seeing it. I think Thursday night. I'm trying to see that ASAP, baby. Um, yeah, and also not only is it getting good reviews, but also Dev Patel has been talking about like how often that production was like on the verge of falling apart, and how they just like had nothing to make it and. You know, so I'm, you know, just a good story. Yeah, they're the kind of, yeah, mockbusters, exactly, yeah. They're so wonky at best, yeah. Um, but yeah, but Michael Madsen, if you guys don't know, he, like, um, he he did a lot of collaborations with Tarantino. He's in a lot of Tarantino movies. So I think he's, like, the biggest actor in it. Um, it's kind of cool. Yeah, oh, you, you literally said that, yeah. Does a lot of Tarantino movies. So when they're taking up the mantle of the dark universe, yeah. So it's probably not going to be good, but who cares? Yeah, he's great. It's good, you know. Anybody? Uh, yeah, I know. Gotta try to meet Manfredini. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try my best. Um, I don't think I'm gonna be vlogging it. I don't think there would be like enough material to vlog because they're they're also they're not doing a Q and A. So, yeah, I don't think so. I'll get like I'll get some footage and stuff, maybe of the people I meet. Maybe you know I'll put it in my put it in my March recap. Anyway, uh. <clears throat> uh, I was away from my keyboard. I was, you were cat dog for Halloween as a kid. <laughs> That's so funny. How did you even, was like the, was one of the heads like hanging off of like your, your butt or like, how did you, were you walking around on all fours? That'd be so funny. Um, love it. Hey. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm super excited for it. Oh, welcome. 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 Um, uh, let's see, wait, what? That could be ready or not. Or there's one question. What? What are you talking about? Um, yeah, he did the monster mash. I wonder, I bet that they wouldn't have had 
<laughs> the budget to to cop the copyright to that song for this one. Yeah, he got a bunch of injuries. They also only had like four stunt tables or something. And so he said that between takes, everyone, like they would smash a table, right? And he would be like doing his own stunts, crazy. And they would be, everyone would just be like on their hands and knees, like collecting all the, the pieces and all the splinters of the table and like gluing it back together again for the next take because they didn't have enough of them, you know? And it's just, it's crazy. I'm going to look more into it. Like once, you know, they'll start releasing all of the press interviews and stuff and we'll get to learn more. It'll be fun. Uh, no, thank you. No, um, Tyrese Brewster is, oh, is Laura Dern's father. You've seen Taryn Manning and stuff. Oh, yes. Okay. I knew that sounded familiar. She's from like Orange is the New Black, right? I'm not like mixing her up. She, <laughs> let me just double check. This is who I think it is. Yeah. Okay. Let me share just if anybody doesn't know. Um, yeah, you're right. I do know this woman. Um, she was in that Karen movie too. And then there were a bunch of videos of her from like real life where she kind of was acting like the character in this movie and it was really weird. Um, and she was kind of like, you know, just like oversharing about some really strange stuff. Like people were kind of concerned about her. I forgot about that. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, that didn't immediately click, but yeah. Yep. That's her uh yeah they didn't have enough stunt guys i know well i'm it's just a it's a story about the filmmaking spirit you know monkey man so i'm super excited to see it sounds sounds like roger corman yeah they're ripping off the most popular franchise at the moment to try and ride the hype gravy train the hype gravy train yeah and cash in yeah it should hopefully be so bad it's good at the least you know at the least but all right, my last bit of news for you all, which is not really like, it's not like news, but you know, it makes me excited. Kristen Stewart doesn't want to make any Marvel movies, but does want to make a scary horror movie. Did you guys listen to me? Did you go see Love Lies Bleeding? If you haven't and it's still in your theater, go, God damn it, go see it. Go do it. I told you, just go do it, okay? Oh, great thrill, like perfect film, okay? Great thriller, love story, everything, all the above. And Kristen Stewart, um, yes. If, if this photo is any indication, she would be great in a horror movie. I need it. I need it. So, um, yeah, he says so you should definitely get out there and support in theaters while you can. If you're not going to listen to me... Okay. Anyway. Oh, yeah. And Katie O'Brien from Love Lies Bleeding. She just landed a huge role in Mission Impossible 8. Love that for her. Um... She says, I will likely never do a Marvel movie. It sounds like a fucking nightmare, actually. <laughs> uh, you'd have to put so much money and so much trust into one person and it doesn't happen. And therefore, what ends up happening is this algorithmic weird experience where you can't feel personal at all about it. So likely not. I don't know. Why would somebody, did someone even ask her about that? Or did she just say that unprompted? Like, I feel like she would have been asked about it. And that's just a weird, in the year of 2024, why are we asking actors if they would ever want to do Marvel? That's just weird to me. Um, so, but, oh, however, if Greta Gerwig asked me to do a Marvel movie, then I would do it. Yeah, that's, yeah. So that's, okay, good. Yeah. I'd like to make a good scary movie. <laughs> like something a little more psychological, a really good horror movie. Ah, oh my God. Oh, she, okay. So she got, she got a start uh, in David Fincher's Panic Room, which I have not seen. Oh, she's in a 2007 horror movie, The Messengers. What? As well as the Twilight movies. Yeah. Um, Personal Shopper. That one didn't really feel like a horror movie to me. It was so such a slow burn that it really just felt like a drama um 2018's lizzie don't know that one. Oh yeah but she did underwater and crimes of the future was good yeah kind of, yeah she has done she actually has done quite a bit I've, i didn't even really consider that um so yeah but if she could you know take the lead and do like a proper you know because underwater that's like action horror which we don't have enough of not complaining about that um crimes of the future like definitely horror definitely horror but um also i don't know crimes of the future is like its own weird thing i can't even describe that film honestly uh so yeah if she got the lead in like just a prop just a oh i would love that i would love that for her and i'd love that for us and for everybody love it um okay stew yes let's go that's what i'm saying uh 
Dare I ask your thoughts on Courtney Cox returning for Scream 7? Um, without getting into, like, you know, um, we didn't need her anyways. <laughs> like, we literally didn't. I thought that Scream 6, because she didn't need to be in Scream 6 either, I thought that um, her function in Scream 6 still worked as a good swan song for her with the franchise. We literally, like, we... <laughs> It's not good. It's just not good. Um, yeah. No. Um, that's my answer to that is, what do I think? Um, I think not. I would think not. <laughs> yeah, um, I guess I need to put this one on my watch list then. Um, yeah, she was good in that. I, but weirdly though, I've only seen like half of that movie. I can't remember why I paused it the night that I was watching it. Maybe it just got too late and I never finished it. <laughs> Whoops. You know. Yeah, Madam Web wasn't technically a Marvel movie, but just seeing the press run of that movie tells me all I need to know that most actors... Yeah. Right? Right? I mean, they used to be good movies, though, is the thing, but now it's just a mess. So of course, nobody wants to do it anymore. It used to be like, you know, every actor wanted to get their moment to get that, you know, cut of that Marvel check, right? And be in something so huge. Now it's like, ugh. I don't want to be in Marvel. <laughs> um... Yeah, I mean, uh, of course. Yeah, of course. Oh, and also speaking of Robert Pattinson, um, congrats on your new baby, obviously. But now Mickey has another official release date for next year. Um, I can't remember when. I think January of next year. I don't remember. Uh, but yeah, it was postponed. Mickey was it was Bong Joon Ho and Robert Pattinson and I think a couple other big cast members. It was like postponed indefinitely, and everyone was like, no. Uh, but now it's got another official release date. I wonder if it's because Robert Pattinson had a baby. Like, I don't know where they're at in production. If it was already shot. I can't imagine so, though. But, um, you know, maybe he just needed to, like, take some paternity leave. And he was like, listen. Listen, I knocked up Suki Waterhouse. And we got to delay this a little bit. I don't know what happened, but it doesn't matter. We have a, we have a release date now. So I'm happy about that. Yeah, it's Cronenberg. Yeah, he's his own thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because I'm like, it's horror, but like, what else is Crimes of the Future? It's uh, like, is this like a drama? I get, like, I don't know. I don't know what to call it. It's really, it's quite strange. Um, what we want to see Case do in a horror comedy? She could, she could do it. She could do anything. She could do it either way. Her character was kind of like the comedic relief of Crimes of the Future. She was so funny in that movie. Oh, loved her. Loved her. I need another one. Why has nothing been announced? It's been like a year. It's been a year since Evil Dead Rise. And nothing has been announced with that woman. Like, come, what are we doing? What are we doing? Everyone was like, she needs to be nominated for a, for an Oscar for that film. And so why isn't she employed? Yeah, she infuses such charisma and her physicality. I know. I know. Uh see her and Casey in a horror film together, that would be very fun. Oh, it would be really fun. Yeah. Um, Lizzie Borden, unfamiliar. He did. He had a... <laughs> yeah. He had a nugget. Yep. Um, which I think is also why Batman 2, Matt Reeves' Batman 2, that was like also delayed and filming was delayed and everything. But I think they just announced that filming is going to be starting next year like early 2025. So that's good. You know, the first one was really good. Ugh. Ugh. Um, you think it needs a total reboot? I mean, I like Scream 6 could have, like the way they wrapped it up, it could have been the end of Sam's story, but I felt like that ambiguous moment at the ending, like there's still something there you know like she doesn't need to be done i don't think um i just don't think that the legacy characters need to be there anymore so anyway uh panic room is great in meadow jody foster being Kristen's mother i well yeah <laughs> because of gay <laughs> but um you yeah, know i haven't seen that one uh twilight i think there there are certainly there's of course there's horror elements to twilight it's like it's written like a fantasy but like werewolves and vampires it's horror and also yeah the storylines mama 
what <laughs> what the fuck that's why there are approximately 1 million and 12 video essays about how twilight was a psychological horror franchise there's too many of them it's like it's tired we've all made the same points we've all we've all made fun of bella where the hell have you been loca like we've been it's done let's wrap it up i bet i still love twilight like i still it's a joke because like the, that, that was um like the second franchise scott and i ever watched together and i think it was like when we had our first sleepover and we just like got trashed and we watched twilight and we like continued to watch the whole franchise together so it's kind of like an inside joke with us i'm always like we're always like what are we gonna watch tonight and i'm always like when are we gonna watch twilight again so i love it but you know we need to wrap up the discussion about it it's just i'm t it's enough it's enough um i know i'm b Ugh. But also, like, it's fine because, like, I don't want them to die. You know? Anyway. Wait, she has a cameo in did The Devil Wears Prada? I didn't know that. Damn. Because I guess, well, because before Evil Dead Rise, I didn't know who she was. So that makes sense. Panic Room was oh, directed by David Fincher. A little hidden gem in his filmography. Hidden gem? Wasn't what? Didn't Jodie Foster get nominated for that one? I could have sworn. Um... Oh, next you're going to be in Sledge's podcast. Oh, nice. Nice. That should be fun. Love them. I invited them for today's stream, but they're doing like Easter weekend stuff with family, so I couldn't make it. But hopefully they'll be on maybe sometime next month. I just can never give them enough heads up. I announce these streams so late all the time because like that's just how the news works. You know, it's always so last minute. So I can't be like, let's let's schedule this for three weeks from now because I don't know what the news will be. So Anyways, um, yeah, that's all I have for you today. A uh, little bit of a shorter stream, but I also, like, I got, I guess I'm stuff done, and then I'm going to a premiere or whatever. So, yeah, I'll take you along with me, at, you know, as much as I can for that, I suppose. Um, I guess I'll let, I'll let you know what my outfit is. Because I, like, didn't, I didn't post anything at all for, for the Blood and Honey premiere, and I should have. I took one picture and, like, one video while I was there. I'm just, I'm like, I'm living in the moment, you know what I mean? But I'll try, like, if, especially if I get a picture with Harry Manfredini, obviously, I'll brag about that, I'm sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, let you know how that goes, especially in my March recap. So, um, can't promise a watch along next week as I will be gearing up for my big trip. But uh, I will still be streaming while I'm abroad, just not as frequently. I really appreciate you guys you guys being here. We had, a, we had a pretty big crowd here today. So it's been really fun. Thanks for engaging with all the news. And I'll see you next time. Bye.